Well, there's been a great deal of research on bilingual education around the world. In fact, I would hazard to guess that it's been one of the most researched and evaluated um, experiments and experiences in education of all time. The, uh, the initiative for, for doing research in bilingual education actually arose from the St. Lambert, what was called the St. Lambert Bilingual Program in Canada. This was a program that began in 1965, and because it was regarded as so innovative and experimental, there was considerable concern that students would uh, suffer in terms of their native language development and their academic achievement. Because from a common sense point of view, one would imagine that if you're teaching uh, children their school curriculum, 100% of their school curriculum through a language that, that they, they don't know, that they're going to suffer setbacks in terms of mathematics and science, and that their native language is not going to develop as much because they're simply getting less exposure to it, and they're maybe learning to read and write in another language. So those fears, which are still prevalent in many communities that are starting up programs, those fears uh, drove a program of research in Canada that went on for 13 or 14 years. And this was a program of research that was managed by researchers from McGill University. And in a nutshell, that research showed that uh, if you assess students' performance over a number of grades, you find that even though they get a substantial amount of their academic curriculum taught through it, uh, French, a language that these students did not know, they develop the same level of competence in mathematics and science. In fact, sometimes they do better in those subjects than students who were taught entirely in the native language. And their native language skills also develop normally. They show some lags in the early years when most of the instruction is in a second language. But as soon as the, sec the native language is used as a medium of instruction, they catch up. This was surprising to people. And so more research was done in other centers in Canada. Research has been done in lots of programs around the world, in the Estonian, the Russian immersion program, for example, in Japanese English immersion programs. Uh, researchers such as Peter, who started up the program in Estonia, they took on the responsibility to evaluate these programs. And the results have been uh, surprisingly consistent and reassuringly consistent in showing that students can really thrive in these programs uh, as well as students in a monolingual program, but they have the advantage that they're becoming functionally bilingual. For instance, uh we also, based on, on Fred's advice, had uh, the Estonian program researched independently. And I recall in the third year of the program asking parents at a meeting, are you satisfied with uh, the quality of your children's Russian? Because that's their mother tongue. And the parents' response at this meeting was, virtually all of them said no. And I remember <laughs> shaking in my boots for a moment and then uh, going to the research, and the research, we were then able to mirror the research back to the parents and say, well, do you know that your children are actually performing better on Russian language tests than the monolingual group is? So the parents actually had exceptionally high expectations for their children, but when we were able to point to the, to the research, then that helped calm their fear. And the research has been replicated in country after country after country. And it, what's reassuring about the, the consistency of these findings is that researchers find the same results even when you've got languages which are really quite different from one another. So it's been found in the case of Estonian and Russian, which are not only from different language families, but the orthography is very different. It's also been found in the case of Japanese and English, which again, you have different language families involved and radically different orthographies. So there are a lot of reasons why uh, people who are embarking on new programs, uh, be they bilingual or trilingual, can be reassured that this is the right thing to do. What we've learned from this research is that, as we mentioned before, uh, bilingualism, becoming bilingual, is usually not a problem for most uh, students, for most learners. The challenges in bilingual education are with the educators and the parents. They need to be reassured that they're doing the right thing, but they also need to be thoughtful about how they do it, because 
although the research shows that these programs have been generally effective, there's undoubtedly cases which have not been effective because they probably have not been implemented very thoughtfully. So it's simply not a matter of changing the, uh, it's the language of instruction. It is also changing the pedagogy to some extent, making sure that one is supporting all the time the learning of both language and content. That's so, right, and that's one of the big uh, innovations now. Increasingly, as these models are adopted, we're spending more and more time, both professional and, and research, looking at what is the most effective way to actually teach language and content together, because that's the hallmark of these programs. And uh, it, there's increasing refinement in thinking about how best to do that at all grade levels and for learners with different kinds of learning abilities. And that involves supporting teachers in uh, looking, uh, taking a different perspective from the one they may have had when they were teaching through the, uh, the student's first language. That means, for instance, if I'm teaching science or if I'm teaching maths, I also need to give some attention to language. I might have some language objectives because uh, language and, uh, and thinking are, are tightly uh, connected. So the research has shown quite consistently in a, a lot of different communities that students who are learning some of their basic school subjects through a second language, such as mathematics or science, even reading and writing through a second language, that they do as well in those uh, areas as students who are learning through their native language, and sometimes better Yes, in fact, there's some research uh, in the area of mathematics that shows that when students are doing their uh, maths through a second language, uh, that they achieve uh, slightly higher scores on their tests than students who are studying maths through their first language. And that, once again, is counterintuitive. It just doesn't seem to be possible. And we can speculate for some of the reasons why. Uh, one may simply be that students are having to concentrate harder when they see a question, they have to read it twice to make absolutely sure. They have to think about the possible interpretations. They have to process it perhaps more deeply than a student who looks at it in their first language and just makes an assumption that they've understood it. Well, and it's certainly, I think, the case that teachers in bilingual programs, especially the teachers who are teaching through the second or third language, they're working very hard and they're, they're always monitoring how effective they are because they can't assume that the students are understanding them or are following instructions. So they're monitoring comprehension and performance all the time. I remember very early on in my days as a researcher in immersion, one of the uh, educational specialists in the school district where I was working said that the uh, big difference between an immersion classroom and a, a native language classroom was that if something goes wrong in a, a native language classroom, teachers tend to think that the students are not doing something right. Whereas if you're in a bilingual classroom and you're teaching in a second language and things are not going the way you want, there's a tendency to think that you're not doing something right and you're not getting through to the students. And whether or not that's entirely true, I think it speaks to the issue that everybody's working harder in these programs uh, than in a monolingual program where we're assuming that things are easy and that you understand everything. And, and we miss a lot of important cues that the students are not actually on track. In fact, there is often this assumption, and when we've talked with parents, they say, well, if my child is listening to this in English, they're going to be able to understand it. But uh, is a student absorbing everything they're hearing? Without a doubt, not. No, and there's a lot of research that shows that if you uh, attend to something more and it's more complex, then you're, you're processing that information more deeply and the acquisition is deeper. Whereas if something is easy to do, then the processing is much more shallow and it's not retained as well or it's not as understood, understood as well. So as a student in a bilingual class, I need to concentrate harder. The teacher probably needs to work harder, uh, make sure they're structuring and thinking through uh, their teaching. Uh, and that is probably, yes, going to lead to a deeper level of processing, consequently a deeper level of, uh, of retention.